Welcome to Salad with a Side of Fries. I'm your host, Jen Trepic, talking wellness and weight loss for real life. We're here to clear up the myths, misinformation, bad science, and marketing to teach you how to eat and how to cheat. Are you ready? I'm having salad with a side of fries. This week, we're talking about tongue scraping. So have you heard of this? So my dad used to do it when I was a kid in preparation for this episode. I asked him if he still does it. He does. So I'll tell you more about that in a second. But this whole nutrition nugget was prompted by our episode a couple weeks ago with Chris Burris called the Age Defying Insights. So he interviewed 55 experts as part of a longevity summit. In that summit, in those interviews, he asked all 55 experts for their top tips for living well and living long. One of those people, as one of their top tips, said tongue scraping. So when he shared that, I made a mental note for us to discuss it further. So let's talk about what it is, why we might want to do it, and how to do it properly. So essentially, it's a way of quickly removing debris, bacteria, dead cells from the surface of the tongue. Now, we've talked about the oral microbiome in our episode, Oral Care and Total Health, featuring Nadine Artemis. So that one aired back in January of 2023. So I highly recommend you go back to listen to that episode. But for today, remember that your mouth not only is the start of digestion, right, but it also has its own bacteria, right? And there's some that we want. (laughs) There are also some bacteria there that we don't want. So some of the bacteria that we don't want or need, plus debris and dead cells, can be part of what causes bad breath. So one of the benefits is potentially removing the causes of bad breath. One of the benefits of tongue scraping is potentially removing some of the causes of bad breath. Now, I say that, but recognize that it's a temporarily removing those causes. So let's say you do this in the morning when you wake up, you scrape your tongue, probably going to prevent some bad breath for a while. But as soon as we eat, right, and we have some of these other things, debris repopulates, right? And then you would either need to do it again or take other measures to prevent the bad breath. But yes, temporarily can improve or mitigate some of the causes of bad breath. Now, there isn't a ton of research. There's a couple studies. One was a study from 2004 that concluded tongue scraping was more effective than brushing teeth at removing odor-causing sulfur compounds. And then a 2005 study looked at using a tongue scraper twice a day for seven days and saw reduced overall incidence of mutant streptococci and lactobacilli bacteria in the mouth. So those are two bacteria that are known to cause bad breath and dental decay. Some other reasons that people like tongue scraping. Now, there is the potential for improved sense of taste. So this was a different study also published in 2004, this research said tongue scraping two times a day for 14 days showed an improved sense of taste. And apparently, you might better be able to distinguish between bitter, sweet, salty, and sour tastes or flavors. Tongue scraping can improve the appearance of the tongue as debris can cause the tongue to look white or coated. So we even talked about it in this week's episode with Dr. Joffrey that the white tongue can be an indication sometimes of candida. So the same 2004 study that talked about the sense of taste also discussed removing this coating through scraping approved the appearance of the tongue, so that the color of the tongue. Now, this also brings up a point about Ayurveda. We have done an episode about an Ayurvedic approach, but This also came up because when I asked my dad about whether or not he still does it, he shared that he and his wife both learned it separately from Ayurvedic practitioners. So in Ayurveda, different parts of the tongue are associated with different systems of the body, and the color of the tongue can indicate different imbalances. So white is a kapha imbalance, red or yellow green is a pitta imbalance, black or brown is vata vidiation. And uh, a pale tongue indicates rakta datu deficiency. So again, you can go to Ayurveda and make sense of all of those words. But long story short, Ayurveda also sees that tongue scraping can support immune health, digestion, 
and may even activate other parts of the organs, again, because if the tongue, different parts of the tongue are connected to different systems in the body. Now, full disclosure, I didn't see a ton of other research connecting some of these claims, but that doesn't mean it isn't true, right? So my logical thinking is if we take the connection between the oral microbiome and overall health, it stands to reason then that tongue scraping may improve overall health, right? So if removing bacteria supports the health of our teeth and our gums, that's potentially a really powerful tool toward overall health. And logically, we can also look at the alternative, right? Look at the opposite situation. So poor oral hygiene can lead to heart disease, potentially some cancers and other diseases. So maybe we want to try some tongue scraping. So I think the easiest thing to do is to add it to your teeth brushing routine. Now, some people will say, oh, I brush my tongue. So it turns out it's not as effective. According to one of those same 2004 studies, the tongue scraper was like 30% more effective than the toothbrush. Now, here's how I think about it. If you think of your tongue like a carpet, right? If you have a stain on a carpet, something falls on the carpet, it spills, you spill something, and it's sitting on the carpet, and then you take a brush, right? You're like grinding it into the fibers of the rug versus you spill something on the carpet and you scrape it right? You scrape what's sitting on the rug, you're able to get it off or more of it off instead of like grinding it into the rug. So that's how I think of like the tongue scraper versus using your toothbrush for this purpose. Now, we want to habit stacking, right? We want to add the tongue scraping to when we brush our teeth, just not doing it with our toothbrush. You can make a nominal investment in a proper tongue scraper. You can find them both in metal or plastic, and they kind of look like an upside down U. So it's like rounded on one side with like long stems or legs, and that's the part that you hold. Now, using a mirror, open your mouth, stick out your tongue, place the tongue scraper, like the rounded end of the tongue scraper, towards the back of your tongue. Not too far. Don't choke yourself, right? (laughs) If you're worried or nervous, start in the middle of the tongue, and then you're going to gently pull the tongue scraper forward towards the end of the tongue. And then what you'll see is that it's picking up almost like this mucusy-like stuff from the surface of your tongue. You'll then rinse off the tongue scraper and wipe it clean. You might have to do it a couple times before what comes off with the tongue scraper is clear. Like I said, when you're done using it, rinse it off, wipe it clean, and then be sure store the tongue scraper in a clean, dry, dark place. Now, a couple tips. Always go back to front, right? Never try to push it backwards. That's the opposite. And also, don't go sideways. Like, don't cut your tongue. Make sure the tongue scraper you're using doesn't have any, you know, imperfections that could also cut you. Also, you don't need to apply too much pressure. So just very gentle. You'll know, but just very gentle. And then remember, like everything, consistency is king right? It's not going to prevent bad breath all day. It's not going to prevent bad breath for the rest of your life. But we want to do this repeatedly, you know, once a day, maybe twice a day. Like I said, adding it to your brushing, flossing routine. But note that it's not going to replace our brushing and flossing. So there you have it. That's the lowdown on tongue scraping. Try it. I'm so curious if you notice your sense of taste improving, if you notice any difference in your immune health or anything else. It might be something you add in. It might not. Do I think that it qualifies as one of the things that's going to help you live past 100? I don't know, but I certainly don't think it can hurt. So all right, everybody. As always, I'm your host and health coach, Jen Trepic. Connect with me on Instagram or all social media. I'm at Jen Trepic, J-E-N-N-T-R-E-P-E-C-K. Website is a salad with a side of fries.com. Pick your platform, send a message. I want to hear your takeaways, your ideas, your questions. This is also the easiest way to learn more about working with me as your health coach. And friend, if you are not already, join our membership program by going to glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries. For just $10 a month, you get weekly recipes, monthly articles or tools, extra discounts from me and our partners, plus access to live Q&A sessions. It truly just supports your health 
and of course, this podcast and this community. You'll get this week's recipe for turkey burgers with spinach, feta, and tzatziki, Dr. Joffrey's three-day gut detox, and your quarterly live Q&A, which is just you and me for 30 minutes. Well, friends, that's it for today's episode of Salad with a Side of Fries. Congratulations for making yourself and your health a priority. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to click subscribe or follow on your favorite podcast platform. Share us with a friend and we'll be back next week. Always remember, you deserve it and you are worth it. Happy healthy.